Yes, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode of Tales of Heroes. This is, uh, Tales of Heroes video replay review number 42, part B. Part 2. Part C. Plan B. Whatever you want to call it. We've got another, uh, shorter video for you this week. Uh, we got two short videos. This is the second one that we've got here. Uh, it is between German Supreme and Nystrom. We had Nystrom in the last one, actually. It was Anaketos versus Nystrom. Showing off the pioneer spam strategy which has been taking over the internet just one of the internets not not all of them um, and so now we're going to show you a more standard strategy uh, a more standard game between uh, German Supreme and Nystrom and we are actually pleasantly surprised to have German Supreme along with us today uh, as well as of course Vittens B my wonderful co-host welcome again to the program wonderful or is that how you say it We've always Wunderbar. been chastised for our lack of our American German accents. It's a stew. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we got German Supreme reborn, and in, you can check out the audio interview for him. He also uh, guest co-hosted, go, co-shoutcasted uh, the uh, Nystrom versus Aniketo's game over on Angaville, and now we have the match on Samoa between German Supreme reborn. And Nystrom. Uh, Nystrom is playing his Axis in this one. I believe he's number one on ladder for, for Axis right now. Uh, so he's been pretty. He's been playing his game at uh, his Axis game at the high level. Of course, he's already dominated the Allies charts for so long. So uh, I guess he's trying to trying to prove that he's one of the best Axis players as well. But uh, German Supreme is also one of the best Axis slash Allied players, and uh, I guess that's a pretty decent introduction for both players but uh german supreme why don't you uh, say hello and tell us a little bit about uh, your clan uh, reborn uh, and uh, how that got started and everything um <clears throat> the gist of it was um i used to be um i guess you could say coh buddies with uh msy win it also known as stars and straps as of right now and um, he made MSY. I know Vittensby, you were in it. I don't. Re I don't remember who else was in there. Um, but you know, MSY went up. War Child went up. I was thinking to myself, I'm not in either of them, and I don't want to join them. So why don't I make one? And our little logo is going against the grain. So, um, yeah, I've been trying to get reborn up and going for the past. Um, two to four months, something like that. Uh, Ami Polisi Punk, or however he pronounces it, has been a great help to me. Um, he actually is the admin for the COH section on clan base right now. So, you know, everything's just working itself out right now. Very cool. Yep. Uh... My thing with Re Reborn was is that uh, you you came around right at the time when ever, like right before the whole influx of all these new clans. Like you were mentioning like the whole MSY like War Child thing, and then I think after we had that kind of clan war a while back, all these clans started coming out. I remember I w they were we were talking in the staff forums about actually making like a a COH like clan challenge form where you could challenge other clans and you know set up games and things like that and I still would like to see that I think that that's a great way I always was a proponent of that of course it didn't happen but I think since there there are a lot of clans um, that uh, it, it would be very interesting to to actually have the have a, a separate forum for that but it's good stuff uh, Reborn's definitely like I said in the audio show a premier clan and uh, hopefully you're representing your clan well in this uh, in this replay. All right, let's find out. We've got uh, sitting at the five second mark here on uh, the Axis. Uh, sorry, the Allied side is uh, German Supreme. The Axis side is Nystrom. Let's get it started. We're at the five second mark. Five, four, three, two, one. Unpause in the beginning. Enemy, it's e enemy of the state style satellite photos of the battlefield. But that sucks. So let's go back to the normal one. Okay, so we actually seeing an interesting path taken by you German Supreme almost everybody builds a building with their first unit you've gone straight for the fuel right off the bat um yeah I 
don't know what I was doing. <laughs> that was, uh, uh, <clears throat> yes, that's my new strategy. I uh, forgot to, I mean, I send him there on, I might want extra fuel right in the early game so that I can buy. <laughs> no, I actually, uh, I think what happened was um, when I play Axis now, I actually do a three pile start. And my last squad um, builds the Wehrmacht. Oh, really? I think I kind of got into that habit. So the fr um, so the first two go out and start capping. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that's it's, that's an interesting strategy. The way that you're capping is right when I think 1.6 came out and the Samoa pin wasn't around anymore. I started uh, myself moving one of my engineers to cap that plus 10 uh, munitions right by my base and uh, playing a little bit more on my side of the river and then push out, um, which is interesting. You're going a uh, jeep first in this one. Uh, I noticed that Nystrom's doing the only part of the Samoa pin that people actually still do, which is wiring off that river right there. And the reason why that's effective is because people move through the center usually with their rifle squad. And uh, that was another reason why I, it, I thought it was always best to, to send, well, what I was doing when 1.6 first came out, although it's dating me a little bit, was to move my rifle squad across the riverbed and then come up where it would be least expected, which was right where Nystrom's wiring uh, right now. What was your thoughts on uh, going Jeep first? <clears throat> I was actually just going to mention why. Oh, I'm glad you asked, though. Um, when Nystrom came out with his replay pack, I was... Uh, basically in my slump, I couldn't win, and uh, spent a lot of time watching his replays, studying what he did, saw a lot, and I mean a lot of his Samoa games, knew exactly what he did every single time, so I knew for a fact that that MG was going to go to that, that house in the north, so I built my Jeep just to uh, harass it a little bit. <laughs> Intelligence. It's very, uh, can win you, the, win you the game, and hopefully your uh, knowledge and, and viewing of those replays will uh, take away for the win. Otherwise, I don't know why you've told me to put, <laughs> put this uh, on the show. So <laughs> y You can tell after three hours now of <laughs> doing this, we got to stop recording for four hours or something because it takes a toll on everyone. But uh, it's an interesting open, especially, opening, especially on Samoa. But mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if it if it plays off, uh, plays out. It's definitely since you're staying on your side of the river, I think it's it's a safe bet that harassment could be the the key. Since your your capping power won't you won't have any problems capping your side. Uh, you you should just be delaying. And uh, it's interesting that Nystrom's capping these 16 munitions before the 10. Uh, yeah, the 10, that is weird. Uh, the 10 munitions. Uh, any thoughts on why he would do such a interesting? move there? Oh, I have no idea. Um, Maybe it was just a mistake. Maybe he thought he'd already captured the plus 10 and he just was, uh, he had a unit no, next to it. So he said, come nice on. Come on. played a million games. I don't think he did that. I'm yeah. Accident. He was probably just closer there. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yep. So, let's see. We got that. In the audio show, we were talking about you putting the MG in that building <laughs> early on, the good old days. And I bring my Jeep to the blind spot. Yeah. And yeah, he's going straight, af uh, straight after the uh, plus 10 uh, munitions now, but he's left a little bit of barbed wire uh, in his back back capping, I guess you could call that. You got back te teching, you got back capping. Oh, that's interesting. I'm I'm calling it that right now, and I don't think anyone calls but calls it back capping. So maybe people <laughs> start calling it back capping right now. How about um, a breadcrumb trail of wire? Breadcrumb trail of wire. Mm -hmm. That's making me uh -huh. hungry. I think I should. I think I should stop. <laughs> we should stop and go. That sounds just, too intellectual. Every, all of us should go have dinner right now. How does that sound? I'll fly out to where Drivers and Free lives. Bridger, he's in the middle of us, so we'll meet halfway and uh, take take our non-existent private jet over to uh, well, over the, to the middle of the country. I think it's pretty interesting here so far that. Um, German that neither of you really pushed to the middle like like we said uh, you went to your side of the river for the most part and then eventually he didn't really go for the middle at all and you just wound up taking it because he wasn't there for the most part you were fighting over the 
plus 16 munitions there in the south, and he has prevented you from taking that, so that is certainly a, a big detriment. But you've got the victory point there, which is also very important, because if you get that thing early in the game, and you're just fighting for a long time, and you just don't notice, man, now I'm down to 300 tickets. So I've got to really put some pressure on. Yep. Yeah. It's funny that you mentioned you'd, uh, you know, fly over to Chicago. I live about 30 minutes away from Nystrom. Ha! <laughs> him and That's I awesome. were actually talking about it the other day. Hey, you guys should get together, have a meal or something. It'd be fun. And then if we never see German Supreme again, we'll know why. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I met I met Exinterp actually down in Santa Monica on oh, the yeah? 4th of July. Yeah, he was visiting some family. I like I like I mean E friends are cool, especially if you if you meet him in R L sometimes. So. <laughs> That's Stop that. using abbreviations. No, no, no. It's, a it's a time saver, believe me. It's yeah, because brain... because right now we're crunched for time while we're waiting for these guys to engage each other. Oh, look, look, they're capping the high fuel and the high munitions, rather. Uh, yeah, capping the high fuel on Samoa would be something to exclaim about. <laughs> All right, so I'm sure that's a, yeah, that's a medic bunker upgrading. Very, uh, very traditional Nystrom gameplay now nowadays. Um, bars first. Everyone is going bars first now. I mean, I, no one barely ever gets grenades anymore. Is that just because people now have cat-like reflexes and never get hit by them anymore? And if you do, you're totally branded a noob forever, or you just feel it's definitely always a better investment first, especially on a map like Samoa with so many buildings. Oh, man. You get a squad of rifles with bars into a building and it's almost like an MG. I mean, they are so powerful in a building. That's one of the great reasons why you get them early game. You mean when you put them in the building because they're able to fire in so many... I mean, putting them in the building doesn't inherently make them more powerful, right? They're just um, covered more. I don't know. Well, what they I mean... cover, but I mean, when they're yeah. shooting at somebody... They do a lot of damage, and you'll right. see it in this game. And I mean, the building got... just allows them to uh, to sustain <laughs> a lot of three... damage, so they can continue dishing oh, yeah. out I, that. I have three uh, three rifle squads just chilling in buildings in the middle, right? All right, so we'll see what happens when they finally come to terms here. You still haven't been able to take that strategic point that's next to the the building in the north, which is unfortunate. But he's got he must have a lot of munitions now, right? Because He's got both high munitions points, so he could be uh, able to pull out some uh, some grenadiers or stormtroopers or something and start upgrading the hell out of them if he needs, if he wants to. How many munitions does he have on the Axis side? And we lost Skype again. All right, let's try and reconnect to him again. While we're watching what's going on here. This is a crazy battle here. I mean, it looks like it was, like he's like, pretty much what Cold Radio said. The uh, the rifles in that building didn't take too much damage because they couldn't be suppressed by by the machine gun. And the other ones were firing from a different direction. The machine gun had to fire or was firing directly at the building, so there wasn't much it could do. That was pretty impressive, I gotta say. All right, there we go. Are you guys back? Oh, there we go. No, there we go. This is right, now you guys are back. Yeah. All right. I didn't pause it. Are you guys still going? Yeah, we paused at 8:30. All right. Well, catch up to me. I'm at. Uh, I'll be at. I'll be at 9:30, and then uh, meanwhile, what? we'll discuss what's going on here. Um, I mean, I, I just watched, and you're going to be watching now, Vittensby, What he was talking about. He had um, the, the 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 guys in that building took almost no damage, and they absorbed almost all the damage from that machine gun that was firing there. And uh, so the Volks were cleaned up by all the other rifle squads that were zoned around. I think that was uh, a very interesting battle that I think was probably poorly executed by the Axis player. Uh, I think that's partially because they don't expect you to be... I don't know. It doesn't seem to me like you'd expect the Allies to just be hiding in buildings all the time. You know what I mean? With rifles, mm -hmm. the goal, the, the advantage of rifles is their maneuverability in some cases. So when you go to attack, you're like, okay, well, I got to get in there. I don't, I don't expect to need something that's going to flush somebody out of a building. Yep. Yeah, I was just talking about for the reverse scenario where there was an MG in a building and you were go for the flank. But I understand the mentality behind it. I just wanted to know if you know he felt that it worked 
if if it was a safer bet in a sense, like than going grenades. But uh, one thing I I've noticed nowadays is is no one op. I mean, barely anyone ops their fuel anymore early on. I mean, back in the day, it was like you know two three right two rifles rifle jeep rifle rifle op or something along that. Now I mean we're ten minutes in and there's no op on the fuel. Um, I just find that it's just been an interesting shift in the in the meta game. Um, All right, there we go. So at nine thirty, unpausing in five, four, three, two, one, unpause. Okay. So I was just mentioning uh, we had uh, some I an interesting battle right there in the middle where the allied bars just completely killed everything because, you know, the machine gun couldn't suppress anything. There was Everybody was in the building there. There was squads came in from the side and were able to obliterate all of those uh, Volks that were there. But we are probably going to get a Grenadier squad if one of these Volks here dies. That might even buy, be why he sent his guys there. He, he could hit the retreat button right now and get a Volk squad, and that's... Or sorry, a Grenadier squad, and I think that's exactly what's going to happen. A mortar on the Allied side. That's interesting. I, I love my mortars on Samoa, though. I put them right in the graveyard. You got heavy cover all over the place, and it can go over that hedge. It's really fantastic. So we'll see how things play out here in just a few seconds. Repairs complete. Let's see. Allies making a big push on the north. He's finally going to take one of these high munitions points. Hey. Hello. And that is why countdowns are over, pal. What do you mean? <laughs> Alright, so I mean, it's actually the first time that I think that uh, German Supreme is going to take one of these high munitions points. For the rest of the game, he's sort of been starved. That's not to say that he has not had enough munitions because he's had these plus tens, but that everybody has. And now we've got uh, a grenadier squad moving in on the south of this uh, of this. Uh, oh, a grenadier grenade completely misses. That's unfortunate, yeah. right there. Grenadiers are great to have just for that reason alone. Oh wow, that was damaging. That was pretty well done, right there. I gotta say. Yep. It's that graveyard, heavy cover. Yeah, that's that's actually a, one of my favorite places to put mortar teams is in the graveyard, right around, uh, you know, in the middle area there, because it's hard for them to be shot at by a lot of things. They've got heavy cover, and they can shoot right over that hedge if you've got, you know, something that can be seen, or if you know they're, they've got a machine gun in that house, or in this case, um, you're, you know, I don't think you know. Do, do you you know at this point that he's got a medic bunker over there? Well, yeah. I think you can see are, it, yeah. The medics are sort of walking right up to pick up the bodies right now. Oh, and he's, he's been mortaring it. Okay. <laughs> Where are those medics coming from? <laughs> I wonder. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. I get it. I'm stupid. I get it. No, it's... Come on, Richard. No, it's just the... No one, I don't think, will know it, but... What has it been, 10 minutes of crashing over and over again on Skype? So, yeah. Um, everything's A-OK -okay now, I hope. Yeah. But uh, it looks like map control is definitely heavily going in your favor. Oh, yeah. Um, your weapon support center. Um, at this point, I think it's definitely paying off. I think that also... I you... love weapon support center. Did you ever open with weapon support center? <laughs> What's that? Did you ever open with weapon support center? We've got no. stormtroopers no. <laughs> now cloaking their way through the center. Then I think you, we're don't, gonna see... you don't love weapon support center. You just <laughs> oh, like... there it is. There it is. The bundle grenade right onto the mortar team and killed it. Very nice. Good, good but game wow. Right there. Look at everything open up on those storm squad. Only two guys get out. I can't believe it. They were in there for like two seconds exposed. That was ridiculous. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff there. What is it? Oh, there's a machine Three gun in rifles, there too. That's why. Two rifle squads. Three rifle squads, a machine gun, and a jeep. I'm surprised they even made it out there, period. That was pretty risky by uh, Nystrom. I think he was... That would have been a little bit safer. Obviously, it worked out okay for him, but I think that would have been safer if he had level two vet, but still. Uh, what is that? And, and German Supreme just remands it right away. So <laughs> I kind of figured out a long time ago, if you control the middle of some line, you win this game. So Yeah. Yeah, that's what I've been trying to do for the past, you know, ten minutes on this. Now, it looks like that storm squad got revealed by accident there. They ran yeah. right into the right... Oh, man! That was actually not a bad bundled nade. Whoa, lots of carnage going on. And Meanwhile, that mortar's really paying off. I mean, yeah. 
so far it's been doing... I mean, landing a mortar right in this squad of Volks would be very helpful. Or there, got another... Yeah, that mortar's really paying off. I I, I always want to get a mortar when I'm on... Then a deer nade just goes like 10 feet past the rifles. Wow. Yeah. yeah, well, didn't we... Didn't we find Still out kills a guy, though. that the grenadier grenades? I think we, when we were talking to Taylor, we found out that the grenadier grenades, when they uh, the farther they're thrown, the lower the accuracy is, right? Or something like that. Yeah, yeah they're not like that. quite right as dead on. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Nystrom's definitely in a in a predicament uh, right now. Uh, getting having this exact layout of map control is really precarious because Axis isn't all that great at assaulting positions. Yeah. Um, he did go blitz, which I'm not completely surprised with that. Although I am a little surprised considering he's. What, I mean, as you saw, probably all those replays of him were terror, right? Mm -hmm. So why do you think uh, he went he went blitz in this particular game? He just felt like, hey, he has the center of Samoa. The only way I can assault that is with. Cloak stormtroopers. You know, I have no idea. When he came out with storms, I was like, "Whoa, that's not normal for him." Yeah. But yeah. I was kind of expecting a uh, tier three blitz with a medic bunker, and um, you know, I didn't really get to see it. There's another grenadier grenade. Unless I'm a little yeah. bit ahead of you guys. I'm at uh, 1535. What about you? I'm right about there too, yeah. Uh, okay. And uh, just upgraded, uh, Nightstrom just upgraded uh, LMG 42. Yeah, I see that. We got LMGs that. there. Yep. The mortar's still doing its thing back there. Yeah, it's a little. Right, pay attention to this one, guys. All right, here we go. <laughs> Assault on the north. <laughs> here it comes. Ouch! Bundle grenade almost killed everybody. And there's the strafing run. And that almost kills everybody, too. Wow. How many guys did we get there? It, it took out the trees and stuff. <laughs> I love when that happens. That was a big-time failed assault. But we got guys coming from both sides, too. Very expertly dodges that grenade. And uh, looks like, actually, the, uh, the LMG is getting suppressed there. That's not really going to do too much. He's got to retreat that one, too. Everything in the middle, pretty much dead. He's, it's probably time to retreat. That machine gun in the church now has double veterancy. It's been doing so much. That's pretty impressive. Now we'll see if he, he's going to get a free Grenadier squad out of this too. So let's see what happens when uh, his next assault. But that was disastrously bad. That strafing run really killed him. And now we've got an entire squad, a uh, couple of squads of infantry suppressed by a machine gun that's shooting at the church, which they happen to be behind. Oh my god, guys! Guys! There's a machine gun on the other side of this building that's 20 feet, 40, 20 yards wide! Uh, I think it might hit me! Uh, okay, whatever. Anyway, I was just discussing, guys, that was ridiculously bad for the Axis. <laughs> Yeah. And there's another. Oh, that's yeah, a recon. Well, no, that was that a strafing run. run. What the heck? Yeah. What did he hit? <laughs> what, where did that strafing run? The one that just went by. Yeah, it did nothing. Yeah. What were you going after? Uh, the storms. The MG and the storm. Oh, well, does I didn't know a strafing run actually did anything to something in a building. Oh yeah, strafing runs damage stuff in buildings. Oh, I didn't realize that. I figured. It also yeah. can kill uh, Pumas if they're. Semi low. Yep. Interesting. Half -tracks. Half -tracks. Yeah. There's something new every show. Especially half tracks. Those things are weak as hell. Dude, they it. break half tracks. <laughs> yeah, the axis half tracks, like anything, could kill a half track. You could kick it with your little toe and the thing would fall over. A, you a got wheel uh, base would fall level on. two vet on that MG in the building. Yeah, Man, I that noticed that. Brutal. Did you ever consider getting a forward HQ in the church at this point? You know you have an advantage, obviously. That strafing run definitely justified a cost of a of a forward HQ, the big one. Uh, were you? Did you ever consider it? Or are you not a forward HQ kind of guy? No, I'm not really a forward HQ kind of guy. I, in my opinion, it wastes 260 manpower. Gotcha. I find it. It. I. I found it very interesting when people would uh, secure the center like this, have a hold, get a forward HQ, and then camp there with like airborne AT drops. Back in the day, you know, supply drop spam. Yeah. 
you would pretty much Im impenetrable, and then uh, just hold, try to secure the right, you know, the right VP, and then the center. So push out slowly after you know mortaring and doing, you know, grenades and all that stuff. And uh, if you could do it, then you lock them in. And uh, I found that that was that the Ford HD really complemented that. But uh, I definitely can understand, you know, the cost of it is pretty, pretty cost prohibitive. It, is that a grenadier grenade in the, in the, yep. uh, yeah, it looks like I only got one guy of the rifle squad there, unfortunately. Now, I think it's interesting that he's not going armor at all. He hasn't even got any vehicles. He's, he's still working with a Wehrmacht, and, uh, oh my god, those bars are obliterating that Volk squad in the north. Completely destroyed it. Holy crap. Yeah, it took him out. And so, meanwhile, even though he hasn't gone anything armor yet we haven't seen a stug or anything pop out you don't have anything that could defend against us like did you like buy sticky grenades and you were going to rely on those until a tank popped out no okay i'm airborne oh I mean, airborne haha <laughs> duh wow that <laughs> makes a lot more sense to me now thank you for yeah. showing me how stupid i am okay um it's true <laughs> I am an idiot. Okay, but still, but I, it's still surprising that he hasn't. <laughs> You're why so mean it, to yourself, why, why Richard. Why, Jesus. Why, why isn't Nystrom? You, you know don't hurt yourself. Why isn't no. Nystrom getting tanks? That's what I'm asking. Bridger needs to be angry at his cable company, not at himself. <laughs> you have any idea? You're shoutcasting a game, and it disconnects, and then two minutes later, it disconnects, and then a minute later, it disconnects. Wait, wait, wait! Stop talking! Stop talking! Watch this bundled nade in this building. It's ridiculous. Which building? Oh, there the, it is. Uh, yeah, the rifles are oh! pretty sure they're suppressed. Wow! <laughs> that killed everything! That doesn't happen very often. I've never seen that in my entire COH history. No, especially because it was a that full was, rifle squad. Full health. That was a full rifle squad with almost full health. So. And look at that! That yeah. was a nice opening shot from a, from a, a stud, too. A second one might even finish it off. Oh, almost did. That would have been very disastrous to lose two squads in a row. Yep. And wow, I can't believe that Storm Squad got wiped out. They're now double veterancy rifles on the right there. We can airdrop resources now. Yeah, that's, uh, that was an interesting button made. I'm not sure why that would do that. The suppression... They were suppressed when they went in there, funny enough. That might Maybe do it. Maybe they had just popped into the house and there's some weird, weird bug, or something. Because yeah, that was that was rather insane. Yeah, I've never seen that before. Uh, yep. But, I've certainly uh, seen it wipe out squads that were at half health, you know, or something to that factor. Now the stud is gonna try and storm into the center and see what it can do here. And there goes the mortar that had done so well. For the Axis, when you get your first tank, actually taking out that wall is not a bad idea, I don't think. Because that allows you so much more maneuverability around the center, you know what I mean? Yeah. And while you're at it, take out all the graves, because then they can't hide there waiting for you. Oh, but a Sherman pops out onto the field. That is going to be Perfect dangerous timing. territory. The Axis player had a lot of munitions before, but he's spent a lot of resources on grenades and such. Does he still have enough to get upgrades like uh, Panzer Shreks and such? No, he actually has five munitions. Wow. Right. Yeah. He's got tons of fuel, but of course he should have tons of fuel because he hasn't really used too much fuel except on the uh, except on the veterancy. Oh. Strafing run in the north, and it looks like. It didn't do too much. Killed. Killed yeah, we'll kill three guys. Three guys. Yeah, I got three guys. That's your average strafing run. <laughs> Look at this Sherman backing up to chase him. Base improvements complete. He does playing ring around the house there, but not for much longer. Yeah, if you remember when you did the the quick fire of questions or whatever you want to call it in yep. the audio show, uh, by far my favorite unit is uh, the Sherman. I love it. The way it moves. Yeah, it's very it micro friendly. Yeah, I, I love it. The storms do have Panzer oh. Shreks now, though. I see at least one squad that does. Yep. No. I can't believe that Sherman oh, took yeah, they do. almost yeah, no damage from the stud. During that entire battle, the Sherman had like a scratch of paint. 
You remember when uh, Sherman's Stugs used to get... Ugh, dear God, Sherman's used to one-shots pretty much Stormtrooper squads. Oh, yeah. yeah. Back in the day. Yeah, that's why no one went blitz. And the style was worthless. It pretty much was inaccurate as hell. But uh, my things have changed. That was interesting. Yeah, Nystrom better get in... Uh, Get in a building with those guys. Up, 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 up! And wow. That's strafing run did nothing either. Yeah, so but it's strafing run to your guys, yeah. and I don't think they even got hurt. No, they don't. It's, no. They don't have friendly fire in the. Oh place. wow! It has yeah. no friendly fire on strafing run. I thought it had at least some. Oh man. Wow. Was that a bundled nade in the middle? I think it was. That one really hurt that rifle squad. But now, I mean. He's been losing so many guys every time. You can afford to lose a couple of rifle squads, and so far you have. And he still doesn't have anything that will really counter that Sherman. He needs at least two squads with, with Panzer Shreks. So that's pretty much GG, and he can tell. We'll see how the rest of the game finishes out. I think that first strafing run killed around uh, six or seven guys. So, let's see now. I mean, Vinsby and I, we've been talking about, uh, about the story. We, we actually, it was last week we were talking about the strafing runs, right? Yep. And that, that we were. That first one, how many guys did he did it kill? Was it like ten guys? Probably at least that, yeah. Uh, I, I think somebody in my clan watched the replay and said it was close to uh, 12 to 15 guys. Wow. I guess I didn't notice because I guess it, it probably killed a squad and I only saw the remnants of the other squads. And let's not forget the mine people. That that was the kicker. And yeah, it took one. out the mine too. Yeah. The strafing run took out the mine? Yeah. Wow, interesting. That'd be interesting. <laughs> the next time we see Aniketos play on Samoa, if he's playing Axis and he gets the middle for more than five minutes, the next thing you want to do is strafing run every avenue of approach so you kill all the mines before you actually run over them. <laughs> so now we've got a last ditch effort of the Axis to fight in the north here, it looks like. Meanwhile, those bars are just long range killers. I can't believe it. There's not really much that they can do. Game's pretty much over at this point, but uh, let's get final thoughts here. I think that uh, this game showed, I think, the problem with staying in only Tier 1. I mean, it seems like it's a little risky to just go for Tier 1 and say, okay, the Wehrmacht Quarter is going to get me all the way to the end of the game. Especially not against bar bars. I mean, if your enemy's upgrading to bars, you really can't rely on just infantry. Bars just tear everything up. I mean, maybe if they got into Knight's Cross. But again, like I said, I think this shows that you cannot rely specifically on only Tier 1. And look at this strafing run. Wow, he hit the retreat button in time. That was actually pretty good. He dodged his strafing run. I did it more to get him away from the VP than to kill him. Now we've got uh, two Shermans on the field. The first one's even got double vet. It's triple vet now. There got, is. got a tiger vet. coming out. Oh, yeah. It's about time, too, right? I guess that's... Yeah, one thing, one thing German Supreme did do, uh, I believe you've had oh. that Jeep the entire game, no? Yes. I don't like to brag, but I'm pretty famous for keeping my... Um, Your Jeep's alive? My Jeep and my bike alive. Yeah. Have you ever got a level 3 Jeep? <laughs> that would be interesting. Uh, somebody Jeep. asked me that the other day. No, the highest I've gotten was level 2. Level 2, yeah. No, no, you're right. I did get a level 3. It was on Angleville. I was uh, harassing piles like the entire game. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Nice. Level 3 Jeep, it's like plus 27% damage. Oh my god. Wow, Sherman got in the way. <laughs> Sherman took the level, bullet for the AT gun. <laughs> level 3 Jeeps are OP, man. <laughs> if you can ever get them. 
Yeah, actually, this I can't believe this Tiger has lost so much damage already, but it's the AP rounds. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, AP rounds, a couple of Sherman shots, and two sticky bombs. Yeah. And no veterans on the Tiger. Tigers always do feel so much more powerful in person. Well, that was a nice bundled nade. Mm, triple fetch. Ah, oh, triple fetch hello. Sherman's coming up to say hello. hello. Penetration increased, damage increased, speed increased, yeah. Good night, Tiger. Axis have less than 25 points. That was an interesting game. Playback over. That was that was a resignation at the end there. Um, so, I mean, like I, I was saying, I think the Axis cannot really survive on veterancy and the Wehrmacht alone. At least not when they're, when they're locked out of the middle. They have to get something to push themselves into the middle. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree with you. I think uh, mortars will do pretty well. Yeah. Or... Um, Possibly snipers, but you know, I did still have that Jeep, so Yep. Yep. All right, I agree. But uh five hundred to twenty four, huh? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna have to have a nice from replay where he completely owns face and it's a great replay. I don't know if that's possible. Yes, yeah, you're really right, nice that might just be a contradiction in terms. Yes. But uh no, it was an interesting interesting game. I mean definitely the turning point was when you secured the center and nicer just wasn't able to pop pop you out of it but, yeah uh, that strafing run was ridiculous definitely yeah. the highlight of the replay for me um but i agree with what you guys are saying unless you're just pio spamming um apparently tier one that's not even tier one that's tier zero as if there was such a thing but i guess we'll call everything that comes out of your headquarters tier zero um <laughs> Yeah, everything, <laughs> including the one unit that does come out of your headquarters. <laughs> no, there's upgrades. Well, okay. it used to be at least. Well, you got demo charges now, but you used to get barbed wire from, from there, so at least the for the year. Uh, zero upgrade? Yes. <laughs> upgrades the that you have before the game starts? Right when the game starts. Tier, tier zero. Well, you're not going to call Pioneers if, if the Wehrmacht is tier one, right? What are you going to call Pioneers? They're Tier 1 also? No, they're Tier 0. Right? It could be Tier 0.5. Listen, I agree that it should be called Tier 1. My point is, for comedic humor and sli slight <laughs> reevaluation of the game, Pioneers are Tier 0. All right, you I got owned by right. Tier 0. You're a 0 for getting owned by Tier 0. Okay? Yes. I don't know. There's the catchphrase. La -di -da. Somewhere in there. <laughs> All right. Time for this train wreck to end. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. <laughs> and uh, we hope you enjoyed this week's shows. Again, GameFire.com is the new host. The new host of, uh, and where you can find Tales of Heroes from now on. We've got the nifty Flash player in there for high quality for everyone. The uh, subscription program is coming sometime next week, which will allow you to download this and all the backlog of the Tales of Heroes shows. If you pay $5 a month in addition, you get an extra video replay review every week above and beyond what everybody else already gets. So it's, uh, you know, it's a dollar a week for, uh, for an extra hour's worth of entertainment and then uh, an extra dollar for all the perks and extra stuff that you get for being a subscriber and just because, you know, you like us. Yeah, that's how it works. All right, for Vittensby... For German Supreme, I'm going to shut up now. Thanks, guys. <laughs>